Mexico, dude, because when it was fucking awesome, like, it was badass to go, like, when it, when it was, uh, there comes a time where every man, where every little boy becomes a, a young man, all right? And it's usually when your tío takes you to Boys Town. <laughs> At Tio Beto, guys, when Tio Jesse took me to Boys Town the first time. Hey, you remember? <laughs> Back then, when there was a fucking club called La Tropicana, okay? Yeah, La Tropicana was a club that is known for a show del Chango Maniaco. And if you don't know what that means, that means the horny monkey. Stay with me on this one, guys, because it was, I was the tender age of 16 years old when I was taking a boy's time for the first time. And they took me to La Tropicana. First and foremost, normally I wouldn't associate myself with a club like this, but the promoter caught my attention. He was in the front yelling, Hey! We got pussy in here! Black pussy, yellow pussy! No, it was like dust till dawn on this motherfucker. I was like, oh. And I walked, I fucking walked into this place, and it's a place that holds no more than 75 people, but there's like 300 people crammed in there. And there's a dirt floor, and there's a dude mopping for I don't know what reason. All muddy, I'll beat you mop at you, right? And there's this promoter that comes out, the same promoter's like, hey, he brings out this beautiful woman with him, and like, who would like to have sex with this hooker for free? And I was like, yeah. <sighs> okay, okay, you can have sex with this hooker for free, but you're gonna have to do it in front of all of us. Oh, fuck off, man. <laughs> like, everybody put their hand down, and like, I don't know, no, no. But there was this one brave dude. Jesse Flood. That said, hey! Yo me cojo esa puta la verga. Which loosely translated, which loosely translated means, I believe I'll take my chance with that fair maiden. <laughs> and he proceeds to pull down his pants and reveal to me what till to this day holds the record for biggest bish, biggest bush, smallest dick combination ever. It looked like a hummingbird egg in a vulture's nest. And he was trying to get, get it hard, but he just looked like a, like a 40 year old person with nearsightedness struggling to swipe feature on the text. What's up, man? What's up, man? And he finally started getting it hard enough to so he could have sex with this chick, right? And then, like, we're in Mexico, dude, so people started fucking giving him animals, like, dale, 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 no quiero sentir. You know your dick is small when you just have to put it in, all, all you can do is thrust your neck in. Si se puede, si se puede. <laughs> right? And in the middle of this, this chick wraps her legs around the dude, and out comes from the back locker room a dude dressed in a gorilla outfit. All right? And he's holding a banana. And with this banana, he puts a condom on it, because apparently in Mexico, they care about your safety. <laughs> And all of a sudden, this fucking gorilla comes from behind this guy, and he thinks he's getting it, and this guy proceeds to insert the banana into this man. Oh, wait. And we started giving him animo too. It's like, dale, dale, dale. No and little did I know at the time, because I thought this was part of the show, but I was witnessing a rape. <laughs> I was witnessing a rape and no one said anything about it. At no point in time did anyone speak up and say, hey, that's not how you're supposed to take in potassium. <laughs> they encouraged it, dale, dale la madre. They fucking pulled out the chocolate covered banana, just fucking held it up to everybody. And I know you think that's disgusting. Next time you see chocolate covered bananas, you're gonna think about it. That's smart marketing. Pinche Raymond con el chango maniaco, 
And here's what I don't understand, guys. Here's the badass part. Do you understand that I witnessed a rape and nobody said anything? This guy is now a victim of rape and he has to drive home, okay? He has to drive home and deal with it psychologically, all right? He's probably driving in his truck and he's trying to turn on the radio, trying to distract himself and the DJ comes on and it's like, that was Gwen Stefani with his shit is bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-X. Like, no, no, no. And he gets home like at five o'clock in the morning and his wife is waiting for him. He's like, where the fuck have you been, Bendejo? I've been waiting for you all night. He's like, I'm bad, no, don't get your mother fucking even touch me. Don't even talk to me. No me toques, no me toques. And she's like, wow, what's up your ass? And he's like, no. <laughs> if you only knew. And then his kids wake up because of the commotion they started and his kids are like, daddy, you remember you promised the day you were tickets gonna get, get back banana splits? You remember, you remember? Callate los hijo, callate, no one's getting banana splits today. Pinche banana split. La banana me hizo split. Todo lo gente. That's as far as my thought process went to the dude that got the banana. But then I started thinking, what about the dude in the gorilla outfit? This is someone's job. How the hell do you get that job? Is that in the fucking newspaper? Like, you walk into the office, like, hey, I came to fill in the position. And it's like, which one? Uh, rape ape? It's like, do you have experience with produce? I'm like, yes, I'm Mexican. Splendid, you, you start Monday. And here's the thing, this dude has to dress in a gorilla outfit and rape man ass day in and day out. I mean, even at some point, that has to become routine. So much so that this, because there's no room for job growth in this job as rape ape. There's no job growth opportunities because they don't hand you a banana one day and the keys to the club the next. So you're stuck at that job. And one day I imagine that he was at his locker room just fucking taking off his outfit. And he's just frustrated with his life. He's putting his fucking outfit in the locker and somebody comes up and says, hey, what's up, man? I just don't know where my life is going anymore. <laughs> and he's like, what do you mean? I'm thinking about quitting. What? Yeah, I just, I don't think I can rape any more ass anymore. <laughs> and then this guy has a serious heart to heart with him. He's like, bro, this club is everything that it has built itself for because of what you do for it. You are the most important facet of this club. Without El Chango Maniaco, there is no Tropicana. <laughs> and he's like, you think so? I know so. Well, what do you think I should do? I think you should go out there and you should rape man ass like you've never raped man ass a day in your life. And he's like, you know what? You're right. And he throws on the gorilla outfit and he's throwing it on and he's like, what are you doing, bro? And he's like, I'm working a double. <laughs> and that night he proceeds to go on an ass raping spree unlike anything anyone has ever seen in this world before. And that night as he's walking to his truck with his gorilla outfit draped over his shoulder, there's a little boy about 15 years old saying, hey, mister, you did a great job tonight. And he hands him a Coca-Cola. And the guy looks at it and is like, thanks, kid. <sighs> and he tosses him a shitty banana. 